Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Two Asian Blokes Podcast, a podcast where we talk about Asian pop culture, films, TV shows, anime, comic books, uh, food, music, whatever we're feeling at the time, really. My name is Dan with H, and with me, as always, is my co host, Tavi. Hi, Tavi. Hey, Dan. We've got our ever so uh, eloquent return guest, Boone. Hello, Boone. G'day. Eloquent. That's, uh, I've never been called eloquent before, <laughs> but um, I'll take it. Thanks, man. Oh, that's, that's sarcasm. Oh, well then, uh, fuck you. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Boone. <laughs> no worries. Boone is here to help us talk about some fucked up shit. <laughs> <Isn't he? laughs> well, yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate we, that you um, invited me pretty much for two things, martial arts and Really fucked up shit. So I, I, I assumed <laughs> you invited yourself, Boone. I, <laughs> Tommy told me you were joining, and I was like, "Oh, this is an odd choice for Boone to want to join this particular episode." I mean, no judgment. Yeah. But <laughs> well, we're covering a, a Taiwanese movie today. I think this is the first Taiwanese movie that we're going to cover, and it, it is it is quite a movie. We went to Boone's place, and we're like, "Yeah, let's." Uh, I got this pretty fucked up movie called The Sadness. Uh, do you want to watch it? And then I think you watched the trailer, you know, oh, this looks, this shit looks pretty wild. Yeah, you linked me the YouTube trailer. Yeah, that's and it. The, thum- the thumbnail was, like, this dude, like, covered in blood and, like, in agony. And the movie was called The Sadness. So uh, <laughs> you had me hooked. <laughs> yeah. You had me hooked from the first thumbnail. It's a pretty simple movie. It's basically uh, a zombie movie. Yeah, so the story follows Jim and Kat, odd name for a Taiwanese couple, but I don't. I think it was translated to English. It's not their in names the in the movie. Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's the anglicized uh, version yeah. of their name. Yeah, but if you wiki it, um, it's Jim and Kat. But anyway, Jim and Kat basically <laughs> are a young couple kind of just going about their day. Jim goes to work, Kat goes to work, and basically a, a virus breaks out which turns people into depraved lunatics, mm. essentially. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much. So it, it's it's kind of like a zombie movie. The plot's quite simple. Uh, mm. The story is just there, so it can you know, showcase extreme violence. Sure. Um, I think the, the extent of the plot is the couple is separated when the virus really kicks off and mm-hmm. throughout the movie they're just trying to get to each other again, right? That's that's basically the plot of the film. Yeah, it's a super, super simple plot. Like, yeah. um, to the point where I was waiting for, like, like some kind of twist to happen to, mm. I guess... Um, embellish the plot a little bit, but it never really comes, which is no, totally no. fine. It's, yeah, it's pretty yeah. bare bones. Like Harvey said, I think it, the plot is just there to to service all the other <laughs> shit that's going on. Yeah, it's not. It's not really about the plot. <laughs> it's not really At the time yeah, that this episode is released, um, this movie will be out on Shutter. If you haven't watched it and you want to, I guess stop listening to this because I don't think there's too much to spoil about this film. Um, no. no. No, not but really. I guess we yeah. might go into some details that you might enjoy more if if you hadn't heard them about them before watching them. Uh, I don't know if "enjoy" is the right word word to be honest, but you might be shocked more. I guess it depends uh, what kind so, of person yeah. you are, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's the point of this episode of this podcast, right? It's to explore what these kinds of films do to different kinds of audiences, I guess. Mm. Like, could we enjoy these kinds of films or not, basically? But yeah, we'll, we'll be talking a lot about the sadness. So if you want to go watch it before listening to this, go ahead. It's on Shudder, if you have a Shudder subscription. Yeah, it's, it's definitely like, uh, usually a lot of the movies I give good reviews on, on this podcast, I would just say, just go watch it, regardless. I say, it's for everyone. Um, this this movie, admittedly, is not for everyone. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's so. very, no, no. it takes a kind of person to enjoy, I guess, the extreme violence that is on screen. It's it's more than just extreme violence, though. Like, there's, a, there's yeah. tons of movies out there that are super violent, but... Uh, it's the other stuff. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned that the word depraved earlier, and that's exactly what it is. Like, it, it brings kind of a new genre to that... Uh, not a new genre, but a new element to that... Uh, 
zombie movie that we're all used to seeing and probably mm. really bored of at this point. Some of the stuff that's depicted in this movie, well, let's let's talk about like I guess the violence first. Like, were you were any of you guys like shocked by the violence? in this movie um i mean i saw the trailer so i I kind of knew the level of (laughs) violence that i was getting into um Hmm. i I was more impressed by the effects i think than than shocked by the violence when i saw it special effects were some of the best i've seen in a horror movie for sure yeah they're really good yeah for for an indie Taiwanese movie. Yeah, yeah. even just yeah. the amount of care taken, you know, for that kind, for this kind of production. You know, this is like mm. a, a COVID film, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> it was yeah, during yeah, yeah. COVID. In, in, um, in more, and, in and more ways a, than one, really. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and from a one uh, uh, really new director as well, Robert Jabbers, this is his directorial debut, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, a for him Canadian guy? to take yeah. such care with the, the practical effects, pretty impressive. So... Yeah, I wasn't really shocked by the violence. I was just more <laughs> like, wow, this looks pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how about you, Boone? Yeah, I, I guess with me, it was, I wasn't shocked either. For me, the violence was actually, yeah, really well done in terms of the special effects. And if you have used to zombie movies, I guess you kind of expect a lot of stuff like that, right? Mm. You expect people yeah. to get their jugular bitten. (laughs) You expect people to get their limbs ripped off at some point. And I think the fact that it it starts off strong as well, like Mm. the first kill is Uh. a guy getting oil dumped (laughs) on his face and then his melted face ripped off, right? Yeah, pretty much. That's a pretty, like, it sets the benchmark (laughs) for the levels of violence that you're getting into. I think the, the violence is so over the top that it's not shocking. It's just kind of really funny to me. Um, but this is, this is the one, the one kind of violence that's in this movie. Um, but obviously there are other aspects of this movie that are much more distressing, uh, mm. much more disturbing. Yeah. So the, na- mm. the nature of the virus is it targets the, what's it called? The, the lymphatic system or something. Yeah, um, like I guess yeah. it's the something, side something of the like brain that. that's responsible for, like, aggression and, like, um, I guess sexual tendencies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the limbic yeah. system, that's it, the limbic system. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, like, because of this, anyone that's afflicted with the virus, they basically just go out and do the most depraved thing imaginable. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it leans heavily towards the, the sexual depravity, right? So... Um, I mean, that's those are the aspects that I found uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> yeah. oh, <laughs> Not so yeah. much the, the the violence, but like, yeah, that kind of um, that sexual depravity that's oh. on screen for sure. Um, and, it's, and it's and it's so like unbiased as well. It's like sure. yeah, it's like male on male and like male on female, female on female. There's like no biases when it comes to the violence and like the aggression. And that's kind mm. of what, that's what shocked me, as you said. And I think that's, yeah. honestly, that's probably what's going to shock most people going into this movie. Because mm. you can't show that in the trailer, right? Oh, so you, no, you can't. there's no way to prepare the, the audience for it, really. And I don't think they necessarily wanted to prepare the audience for it because cause it's so in your face that obviously the intent is to shock. Yeah, you can't It's, show desi- that it's in designed movies. to shock. <laughs> You can't show that in movies, full stop, let alone trailers yeah. most of the time. Like it's a bit of yeah. it's a bit of a taboo kind of theme and topic a lot of the time, even in horror really. So mm. yeah, that's mm. why it's so that's that's why this particular movie is Yeah. Yeah. And it is pretty unfiltered as well in this yeah, film. It's... Like it they don't <laughs> explicitly show anything, I don't um... think, because like I don't think. Yeah, they, they do. <laughs> I think there's, there's a limit to what they can show, right? And I guess I guess we can probably talk about some of these moments. Um, we'll try to do it in the most family friendly way possible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean like... just, there's there's an obvious there's there was two scenes that I think no, I think one no, actually no, there there are a couple of moments that I <laughs> okay. was shocked by. There's multiple moments There's... where they try and shock <laughs> you with this sexual violence aspect of the film. 
and yeah. it's it's pretty unsettling every time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna Explicit lie. Or is it implied? <laughs> oh no, well, no. Um, I I mean, we'll probably talk about <laughs> some of these moments, well, so I can uh, remind you <laughs> of a few of them. Maybe I just blacked out. <laughs> I, I think I think the most shocking moments. There's obviously where the uh, man sticks his phallus in orifice. Sure. Where you see from, which yeah. is, uh, <laughs> I see, think that, that's that's, a, that's the thing. Like that scene, it's shot like it, it's a front-on shot of the man. Like, yeah, it's implied, yeah. Side, and you can hear the screaming. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Because, the yeah, but because the um, the violence and like the movie hadn't held back at all un- until that point. So yeah. for me, the unsettling part was whether or not they were going to actually show what was happening to true, her. True, yeah, true, yeah. true. You know, I didn't know where the movie was going to draw its line. I guess that might have been um, by design. But yeah, that's <laughs> what I found unsettling about that scene. I actually had to take a break after <laughs> that scene. Yeah. Yeah. Stop, that's, stop that's watching fair. it. Bro. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. We were um, we were eating popcorn when we were watching it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the atmosphere when you were watching that scene? Was it just it, quiet uh, and like eating popcorn, or it was kind of like a, a nervous laughter? Uh, yeah, okay. there was a lot of screaming. I do think that it was enhanced by watching it with you guys because when there were the like really shocking moments of violence everyone would just be screaming just at how like painful uh, some yeah. of the things looked mm. um there was definitely a uh we we watched this with nat who i'm very surprised she made it through most of the movie <laughs> when that particular scene happened i remember she said like you bring some weird movies to our place <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah, much. Yeah, she was able to get through it that's yeah, that's impressive. No, well, not impressive. really. She was, she was on, she was on her phone most of the time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but she tried. That's the main mm. thing. I think she appreciated the premise. When I told her that we were going to watch this really depraved zombie movie, she was like, "Okay, cool." But I think mm. we were all prepared for a really <laughs> depraved kind of violent zombie movie. Were you prepared for that though? Like that aspect of the film. I was not prepared for that, I would have to say. That's why this movie excels, I suppose. Because, sure, you can expect violence and gore and depravity, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, but um, I think, yeah, the majority of people who go in and watch this film will definitely f- find all of that. <laughs> the blood orgy. Yeah, well, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all that more vivid, I suppose, than they initially anticipated and Mm. yeah kudos to yeah the production team for achieving that especially with not yeah not caring about what other people (laughs) think i guess like going beyond regular standards i guess when it comes to cinema do you think this is a a film that could be made in the states with this content uh no definitely not in my opinion not not i don't reckon from like a, a mainstream studio i think there would be some people where was that is the human centipede an american production <laughs> yeah i think it was a half american half german production i, I wouldn't uh no I, I haven't seen the human centipede no, I haven't actually either. that was one i probably should have but watched the human centipede um, is kind of like <clears throat> it ha- it had a lot of like hype before it hit the cinemas as well. And um, I guess it's not, you wouldn't call it like violent or like graphic. It's more like the the premise, right? The concept is It is pretty depraved. (laughs) It's pretty depraved. (laughs) So I guess if they can make something like that in the States, this isn't that much more of a stretch. Like obviously in terms of graphic content it is, but like, premise wise i think it's with the climate of what is being made in hollywood today with how sensitive people are yeah. uh, it'd be very hard to get funding yeah, for nah. this movie nah. but in taiwan it's like yeah man <laughs> <give a> fuck. <laughs> it's also the sexual sexual violence right yeah the yeah. sexual violence aspect is as i said really taboo and they're not going to especially in hollywood they're not going to you know 
touch that with a sure. 12 foot pole you know what i mean but <laughs> independent production you know they can do whatever they want <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this perhaps, production yeah. was was funded by a combination of cryptocurrency and revenue from a producer's <laughs> cam girl business so oh, cool. they can do yeah. whatever they oh, want really? with that money <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there you go <laughs> yeah i read that as well that's that's like peak 2020 is it oh 2022 it's, it's isn't so it? off the time yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it really is it's, uh, and like the subject matter like the the social the social commentary aspect is mm. very of the time too how do you how yeah. do you feel about the um the pandemic uh parallels did you like that aspect of the film like the commentary side of it i guess i think it's a little bit weak because it's obviously like what i got from the film is like you know sticking people in quarantine will make people go crazy and bring out people's depravity you know? <laughs> i mean we all know that though it's you can get that from watching bo burnham's inside <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 um the allegory is there but i think it's just i think it's just the violence is what is mm. really like it's kind of like a test of how far um you can go which brings up kind of the next point like i'm gonna admit i had a lot of fun watching this movie and mm. i enjoyed it <laughs> uh did you guys enjoy it <laughs> That's, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you go ahead, Boone. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to say it was probably one of the better zombie movies I've probably seen. And probably, this is a big call, it might be the best zombie movie I've seen since Train to Busan. Um, that's that's a pretty big call. Yeah, yeah. and I'm, maybe it's because, like, after Train to Busan, we've seen so many kind of, like, Korean zombie you know, movies mm. and uh, spin-offs and stuff like that. Yeah, it was nice to see it packaged in Taiwan. I haven't really seen a horror movie from Taiwan before. And mm. um, that aspect definitely, um, yeah, I think added to things. Like the urban setting of the, I guess, the outbreak was yeah. a little bit different to what we're used to seeing. It was a bit warmer. <laughs> it looks fucking hot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, looks it, did, it did look pretty hot. Yeah. Yeah. And like, um, yeah, it actually reminded me a lot of you know Thailand and like sure. Laos yeah, and Vietnam, did, where, yeah, like, yeah, where, yeah. like where where our parents are from. Because so you get a, you that, get a that, sense of cool. the um, the urban environment, but also when Jim like rides out to the kind of the countryside area. Yeah, as well. yeah. So you get. It's definitely yeah. like hot. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it makes Taiwan look pretty good. <laughs> they're, they're basically like those kids are like slamming that guy's dick into a pole. Mm, yeah, <laughs> <Just about Byron's. laughs> pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because because cool. it's fun, and then like yeah. you realize that he's actually <laughs> enjoying it. Yeah, which is it's pretty depraved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you touched on this earlier, Tavi, but you mentioned that the violence actually made you kind of like laugh a lot of the time like it had a comedic mm -hmm. kind of element to it do you think yeah. that was like intentional or do you think that's just kind of like a byproduct of you trying to i suppose subconsciously defuse how like fucked yeah up it is? that's <laughs> that's like a, that's a pretty good question and like i i wouldn't even really be able to fully answer it because sometimes it is to kind of diffuse that tension and it happens a lot in horror movies in general you know mm. like if i'm watching like a particularly jump scary scene uh and i'm watching it with friends we'll kind of just laugh uh yeah. or like we'll, we'll laugh at some of the deaths and stuff <laughs> um but like at times there's kind of like you know we we're talking about those scenes earlier where it was like a laughter um but it was kind of like diffusing that as well yeah mm. When you watch that in a, in a group, it's kind of like a bit of an instinctual thing, right? To, yeah, yeah. Because you don't want to feel shit, like, collectively. Yeah. Like, you don't want to feel, <laughs> like, like unsettled as a group. Mm, like, yeah. I guess laughing and, like, screaming <laughs> kind of <laughs> diffuses the tension and keeps things I think, fun. I think it was a combination yeah. of both uncomfortable levels of violence and, and funny levels of violence. Like, there is a... Yeah, yeah. There is a a point to like you know um punchline violence i guess like we we've talked about the night comes for us before mm -hmm. in a previous episode um i'll link it below but and and yeah. a lot of that is I like was in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. it's funny like some of the violent acts they're like so gratuitous that it, it is funny and i think there is some elements of this film like draw that line 
But yeah, the thing about that is like you can do that with with physical violence, I guess, but you、mm. can't really do it with sexual violence. <laughs> like the, mm, the yeah, further I mean, you go、oh. with that kind of violence, the more uncomfortable、yeah. it gets. Like it never gets to a point where it's funny. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I think. So, like, but like, that's what, that's what this movie will be remembered for, right? It's not yeah, like, yeah. but like people's getting limbs getting ripped ripped off yeah, and yeah. like the copious amounts of blood. It's the Fucked up, like sexual things that happen to it's the yeah, it's the depravity to everybody. <laughs> Because we've all watched this movie and have like enjoyed it, and I'm sure there's a lot of other people who are especially into this kind of genre of filmmaking. Like, are we like fucked up people ourselves? Like, <laughs> do you think we do you think we are bad people? Because I don't think you guys are bad people,、mm-hmm. um, but like you know. Like、I, this... I think you're a pretty bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, fair I mean,、right. none of us are that great, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, I enjoyed the movie, but it was hard to watch for me.、Mm. I think it, it was definitely the most polished of this kind of movie that I've seen, and I think、mm. because of this, like I forgave a lot of. A lot of things in it. <laughs> like, <clears throat> like I'm not really a fan of pandemic movies, but but I gave this one a pass, and I don't really have the stomach for like that more grotesque content. But again,、yeah. like it gets a pass just because this film, like the cinematography, the acting, the direction, the practical effects, and even the tackling of the film's themes, I think are pretty well handled. Like pretty top notch,、yeah. to be honest.、Mm, yeah, mm. yeah. The performances are, are pretty good too. Like quite believable. It's a pretty、mm. surprisingly good movie. Oh,、yeah. the casting、yeah. as well. Like the. <laughs> The main characters and the, the villains—they're all yeah. The, the, quite, the main antagonists. They're quite the, villainous. The old man. Yeah. <laughs> Even the zombie acting is pretty good. Like the the demonic smiles that everyone has、oh, on their yeah, faces. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. It's cool, yeah. man. That's a cool little detail.、Mm. <laughs> and they're not and they're not relying on like heavy makeup or anything either. Like the、mm. way that the zo- the quote unquote zombies are portrayed in this movie—they kind of they kind of just look pretty normal. Like you can't really tell、yeah. that they're zombies they got, all they the time. They got black eyes and and yeah, a little, 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 little bit、yeah. of pus coming out of、yeah. their eyes. But Until yeah, they it, it's not say something really like fucked up or they you know. Start running at you violently. <laughs> you <laughs>、yeah. don't really, you don't really know for certain if they're a zombie or not. For me, it was a little bit much. Like the, just the unrelenting nature of it and the bleakness of the ending as well.、Mm, it didn't、yeah. leave me with the feeling that I enjoyed the film. But I think、yeah. upon reflection, there were a lot of things that I did enjoy about the film.、Mm, sure. Just the immediate aftermath was like, oh man, I feel like shit. Like,、mm. <laughs> you know, I didn't think this film was too much, specifically for me. But I've watched a lot of messed up shit. <laughs>、uh, so I'm pretty. Well,、eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wanted to. Oh really?、Uh, because I, I never would have known. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, honestly, when I when I finished watching this movie, like I knew the ending was going to be a nihilistic ending. Ah,、oh, this is kind of a spoiler, right? Yeah, that's okay. We're doing spoilers, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you don't want to、so, hear it, fast forward. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but、um, I, I did want Cat to escape、mm. for sure because, like, you've just watched her go through so much shit. Yeah. And it's like it's kind of like very convenient that she's just immune because that's a very common trope、mm. in a lot of zombies. There's the immune person, but the fact that she, well, my ending. My interpretation of it is that she wasn't immune. It just took her longer、mm. to be infected by the sadnesses, <laughs> I guess the viruses we've called yeah. it. Yeah, yeah,、um, yeah. But yeah. yeah, like no, no one gets out alive in this movie. <laughs> Was that ambiguous or? I think it's supposed to be ambiguous, but it's not really.、Mm. Like I've read some interpretations that it was ambiguous, so you don't know. Either way, like, she gets killed, right at the end. Yeah, she she gets killed. Well,、um, but I, I don't really get what's ambiguous about it. <laughs> to be honest, like、uh, the whether she's infected or not when、oh, she exits、yeah. the building, I it's, think. It's or whether it's, she's like gone、obvious? crazy. <laughs> like you don't know whether she's gone crazy through the sadness or like or like just, just general, being crazy. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I, I feel like that it's like yeah. I feel like she wasn't actually immune. It's just like it just took yeah, longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I gathered yeah, that's, from that's watching it as well. As well. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, but yeah, pretty bleak stuff anyway, right? <laughs> Super bleak. It's, it's a pretty pretty bleak. Did yeah. You, did you but, guys have a, a favorite part of the film? 
<laughs> favorite quote unquote. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't all say the skull fucking but <laughs> oh, yeah. what, what, what about the blood <laughs> allergy? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sure. I mean the, the part with the the I guess the Otaku guy. <laughs> I mean we just call him the Otaku guy where oh, he gets okay. his little yeah. gets his little number yeah. you know yeah, sure. blazed off by that woman. It was pretty I was like, damn. But not necessarily favorite moment, but the moment that <laughs> really got me as well. And it's arguably one of the lesser violent moments is when the dude gets his like foot cut off and then oh. the guy like pukes on it. <laughs> like, <laughs> from, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. man. Because yeah, like, it's, it's, I can handle like guts and violence, but when it's like bodily fluids leaking onto other people, like pus and shit, like that kind of shit disturbs me a bit more. I was like, mm. oof. Like damn, <laughs> you know that's <laughs> that that stuff gets to be a bit more. How about you, Boone? What's your what was your favorite part? Ah, uh, yes. Um, or maybe standout part. Standout. Yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a tough one for me, but to not maybe repeat some of the stuff that we've already talked about. Um, I think the standout thing for me was kind of adding in that um, virologist character. Towards oh, yeah. the end, oh, a bit yeah, of a, yeah. I guess that was a bit of a twist. Like you didn't really yeah. expect that. That's a, that's also a bit of a zombie trope, though, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The guy that just knows the cure. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but, that character uh, was fun. Yeah, it, and I, like, I would like to play that character. Oh yeah, for <laughs> sure. And like, I think like it was neat that he was, I suppose, like he was a quote unquote good guy in that he was trying to tell everybody that this was going to happen, but at the same time, he's also like got a bit of fucked up in him as well. Like, it's obvious. Oh, yeah. More than yeah. Well, that's, that's like, <laughs> part of the message of the movie, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, everyone has that level of depravity. Like, yeah. during the uh, the blood orgy scene where the otaku guy is, like, watching them. Yeah. And, like, you, you, you kind of said this. is like, man, that guy's, like, enjoying it. That's fucked up. But, like, you don't... Like, it's not explicitly shown that he is. Like, it's not obvious, but with, like, those just quick glances and stuff and, like, just kind of that generalization of people. It's, it's obvious that it's, like, he was aroused slightly by that, which is pretty disturbing from the people who aren't infected by the sadness, mm. For sure. Yeah. And the virologist, like... He's kind yeah. of like pretty seedy, like when the girl, when he's like keeping the girl captive and stuff like that. Yeah, he makes yeah, a lot yeah. of, it, there's a lot of like, you know, suggestions that he's like getting, you know, aroused himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, even though, like, you know, he's kind of using it really as like a bit of a guinea pig, right? Yeah, and all the baby killing as well. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's fucked up. But you don't, yeah, really, you don't, really, you don't really see much of that, right? It's more kind of like, oh, yeah. One of the babies has the sadness and like, she looks at it and it's like, it's <laughs> kind of funny. It's a little, little bit of CG or a little bit of practical effects. I know. What about you, Dan? I, I like the part where it kind of all kicks off, like when Jim's at the food joint mm. and like the tension <laughs> yeah. builds up, like that ghostly old person enters and then, yeah, the, you get the first kill of the movie. <laughs> yeah, that was um, fun. But even like, I was like, oh. <laughs> like, oh. like he's escaping the shop and like, there's just chaos like the the old lady gets run over and then a woman like hurls herself from a rooftop like while laughing yeah, hysterically yeah. just like the camera work in that in that scene and like yeah. the way the camera moves with the action and like it just really acts uh, like adds to the impact of what's happening so on well the screen done. Yep, so yeah, well, and so he, well like done. the performances as well. Like Jim, he like runs home. The first thing he does is smash a beer. You know that seems <laughs> like a, like a <laughs> you know reasonable reaction to what what's yeah, going on. Yeah, yeah. He looks, it <laughs> so, looks, he looks freaking tired. <laughs> yeah, like he's yeah. Really in shock. Ah. Yeah, <laughs> I thought the um, the Basil guy was going to have a bit more of a role, like the neighbor, because he doesn't because Jim doesn't kill him. I yeah. feel like but, his um, his role was just to be that like. Covid Delta, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and he's also the the guy that infects um, Jim, isn't he? Like, I'm uh, pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's I think kind that's, of unclear how the yeah. disease is transmitted, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's what I gathered. I I gathered that it was the neighbor yeah, that been. ended yeah. up because, like, you know, he cuts his fingers off and shit like that. Another scene just kind of came back to me. Like mm. now that you've mentioned best scenes, but. We've seen a lot of kind of like violent, I guess, 
train scenes in a lot of movies lately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, the one Matrix in... Resurrections. <laughs> 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 well, I was thinking more like you know, nobody, the Raid Two, um, Joker. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah. shit! But you know, completely, completely missed those movies. Yeah, but um, <laughs> there's there's also uh, quite an extended train scene in this movie that it goes for a while. Hmm. It takes place during, like, I guess the peak of the beginning of the outbreak, right? Which is mm-hmm. kind of weird, yeah. Where everybody starts kind of, like, getting the sadness, quote-unquote. Yeah, that's another good scene where it builds up the tension. That and scene's then... basically, like, the hook of the movie, yeah. really. Like, that's what the scene's all in the trailers. Mm, like, yeah. all these guts on the floor and shit, people holding in their intestines and stuff. <laughs> and, like... Slipping on the fucking yeah. but floor, but even the precursor to the violence, I thought it was really good. Like the mm. the old man, like kind of hitting on cat. It's just a really good, like kind of build up of tension because you know this guy is gonna get the virus and like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and, he, and yeah. he's like angry at everything. He's angry yeah. at society, yeah, 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 yeah. which is like another, like, which is another bit of social commentary. I mean, like I'm sure he's like representative of a uh, you know. A faction of the population at present. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. yeah, a lot of good stuff in this film. Like a lot of things to like. Um, yeah. Even though I was left uncomfortable at the end, but you know, looking back on it, I can say that there was a lot to enjoy. Um, which leads to your question from before, Tavi: Should we enjoy this kind of? <laughs> 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 like, yeah, that's honestly good. like. Is there a place for these kind of movies? Like, why? Because if you think about it morally, like, these movies shouldn't exist. Um, we shouldn't be watching them. But, like, you, I don't think you can really deny that part of yourself. Because everyone has a little bit of the sadness. Everyone's <laughs> a little bit depraved to a degree. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know. I think, I think these movies should exist and should be enjoyed. I mean, like, as long as you have a healthy understanding of what you're watching is, like, depraved and is evil, you know. Because I would, like, never do any of the shit that is depicted on <laughs> I this film. Not <laughs> <you. Sure. laughs> I find it sucks that you had to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, yeah, I mean, like, let's say all these kind of movies are banned, right, or you've not had any exposure to something that's this violent or disturbing. I think you should watch something like this once in your life Mm. and just know what it is. Otherwise, you're going to have, like, a band of people who are offended by turning red, (laughs) where it's like there's nothing there to be offended by. Mm. But it's like you, you should, like, look at something that is actually utterly depraved so you can get that definition, like... You need to be smacked in the head with it sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you know? I don't know about that, though. I think if you don't have the stomach for it, you shouldn't watch this film because it's going to make you hate this kind of film even more. Like, <laughs> <laughs> to yeah, be yeah. honest, I think because it's not for everybody. And I think if you if you watch the trailer and you hear what the premise is, and you don't want to watch it, don't force yourself to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody has a line when it comes to violence or depravity in cinema. Like some people consider Old mm. Boy a depraved film. Like, it is. I uh, mean, like, Old Boy is pretty depraved. Yeah, yeah. Old Boy is definitely <laughs> pretty depraved. But like, it's not on the same level as something like this, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course not. I mean, like, to answer the question of, as to whether we should be enjoying shit like this, there's people who like horror and there's people that don't like horror, right? And mm-hmm. the reason why people that, I guess, enjoy horror, it's because they, I don't know, they want to escape from, like, reality in a sense. Same reason why people watch Marvel movies, right? But to, yeah. but I guess it satisfies another part of the brain, like fear. <laughs> like it, it evokes a, kind of like a different emotion out of a lot mm. of people, and that's why people watch mm. this kind of stuff. And, you know, there's extreme movies in every genre, and this just yeah. so happens to be one in, in the horror genre. So I think, yeah, it's it's totally fine to enjoy stuff <laughs> like sure. this yeah. um as long as you're not uh using Doing it as it. well no, <laughs> yeah, as long yeah. as you're not using it to like yeah <laughs> as a blueprint <laughs> for your life or anything like that <laughs> <laughs> don't get inspired by it please yeah. 
<laughs> Do you think this is the most disturbing movie you've seen? Mm, yes. For me, yes. By a long way as well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> By a long yeah. way. That's, that's, that's saying something. I think, uh, yeah, after, after watching this with you, Tav, I was like, yeah. I think that was the most fucked up movie I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, I think that's one of my exact words. And, like, I, yeah, I think it probably you did say is. That. I think it probably yeah. is. Like, I mean, it's hard because we've all probably seen like heaps of really violent movies with like mm. probably as much or if not like more like blood and guts. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, when it comes to like disturbing, I've got to say like, this is, um, yeah, it's, it's up there. It's up there. Yeah. Yeah. When I watched this movie, I was really kind of not that phased by it. So I was like, oh, <laughs> am I like, am I like fucked up? Am I depraved? <laughs> so... <laughs> I spent, like, a couple of weeks after just watching some more of the extreme movies. There's a particularly popular French movie called Martyrs. Mm. Um, yeah, it came I've out in 2008. Heard of, heard of this film. And, uh, yeah, that movie is pretty messed up. It's not as gory as the sadness, mm. but the violence in it is much more realistic Mm. which arguably makes it more violent. And there's a certain sequence at the end, which I think is the one that tests people the most. Mm. There's actually, it starts, the first half is really good, almost like a house invasion thriller, really. Um, but then the second, uh, second half of the film is more like torture porn, basically. Oh, mm. yeah, um, I've, I've heard of this movie. I've heard yeah, of this movie. it's... It's a good movie, and it's again, it's one of the. It's like if you're not if you're squeamish, you probably shouldn't watch it. Um, if you want to become a vegetarian, uh, you should watch this movie because <laughs> I, I would have to say the next day when I was eating something, I was like, hmm, this is a kind of reminding me of that scene in this movie. <laughs> uh, but Sonny and I were eating chicken nuggets when we were watching it, so you know, yeah. Like in terms of disturbing, like the thing about the sadness is that. The sadness doesn't give people the choice to be that depraved. I watched the movie Silence again, the one that I talked about in um, the Squid Game episode. Mm. Um, I I find that movie a lot more disturbing. Because there's no Um, virus. Well, it's based on a true story too, right? It's it's based on a true story. And it's just like the, the ignorance of the adults and what they're doing to the children and having no regard for it and people having no regard. Like, it's obviously going to be, like, dramatised because it's a film, but, like, just the lack of care of Mm. people, I guess. And, like, there's some really strong scenes in that film um, which are very hard to watch. Uh, Like, I I had to take a... I think I watched... I I literally came home after watching The Sadness and watched The Silence, (laughs) half of it, because I was like, hmm, I didn't think I was that disturbed. <laughs> so I watched it um, just, to, just to see if, like, I was still human. <laughs> because I'm like, man, like, you know. But, um, yeah, no, um, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, you're gonna, if we're going to talk about, like, Korean movies, I suppose, like, another movie that made me feel similar was um, I Saw the Devil, which is, I guess, mm. a psycho- psychotic kind of murder movie. But a lot of the victims in the movie are women. Well, I guess that's a, also a horror movie trope, but um, mm-hmm. this isn't really. A, but I saw the devil's not really a horror movie. Yeah, it's one of those films that like borders the line. Like it's yeah. it's spoken about a lot in like horror forums and stuff. Like mm. I saw the devil has a reputation amongst people that enjoy horror. I found that movie the... pretty unsettling at the time too. Yeah, yeah I mm. mean, and it's a really good movie as well. Yeah, I literally just watched that movie before this podcast. Oh, nice, um, cool. It's good. It's a good sick movie, man. <laughs> so it's so, like I saw the devil. It's definitely a hard watch. Yeah, it's fucking unsettling. Like I think that's the premise. That's that's what the director yeah. kind of wanted, right? Yeah, but it's such a beautifully shot film. It's such a good movie. Like I, I've I've seen I saw the devil like a handful of times. Two powerhouses of Korean acting in there. Yeah, man. It's <laughs> during the peak. Of, during their choice. peak. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fuck. 
such a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> so good. It's, it's pretty depraved like, yeah, too, man. <laughs> it's pretty it depraved. Is. It is. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think a, a lot of the films like that you've listed kind of involve torture, right? Yeah. I think mm, yeah, torture yeah, yeah. like goes a step beyond violence, I think. Mm, and mm, then yeah. like sexual violence goes a step beyond torture probably mm, right? yeah no that's, that's <laughs> but on, that's honestly dan point. like i reckon um i reckon i was more disturbed by lesson of evil when i first mm. watched that movie so lesson of um, evil is is a film that we talked about in our previous or last back year's back episode. to school episode yeah but we decided right, yeah. to edit it out well i decided to edit it out <laughs> <laughs> Tavi wanted to keep it in of course because he's he's fucking depraved but <laughs> yeah, <I'm> depraved. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I decided to edit it out because I don't think um, the content was uh, appropriate, I guess, to air at the time. Yeah. Um, even yeah. though we're making this episode now, which is a lot worse than... <laughs> <laughs> a lot worse than the Lesson of Evil. Um, but, yeah, talk uh, about Lesson of Evil, Tavi. Uh, just the segment in which the teacher uh, basically kills his students at the end of the film. It's like a school shooting. It's It's pretty violent, but not nowhere near to the level of the sadness. Mm. But I think it's just, like, the contrast between, like, some of the goofy aspects of that scene to the more, like, realistic aspects of that scene Mm. was quite disturbing. Mm. And I remember watching it for the first time, and I was just like, damn. Like, it was, like, 4 a.m. when I watched it. Uh, And I'd, like, watched, like, two, three other movies before that. So I was, like, on the more on the fatigued end. But I was like damn like it just did not make me feel good <laughs> yeah and and in that film i think the violence is tried trying to be played off as a laugh which yeah but it's it's just more it's yeah like, if anything that adds to the uncomfortableness <laughs> of watching it right like takashi Mika is just good at making you feel disturbed there's one one movie that i rewatched, i think last year ichi the killer mm-hmm. i was gonna mention ichi the killer yeah, yeah. that that movie for me, is actually really hard to watch. <laughs> yeah. Um, for some of the more misogynistic components of that movie, mm. I think were was too much for me. Like, even, like, compared to the sadness, maybe not as... Oh, it's pretty violent, come to think back. Like, I just find <laughs> Nature the Killer... It is. And like, it, a really a, disturbing There's an movie. unsettling nature yeah. to the tone of the film as well. Like, mm, it's really yeah. whack as well. So yeah, yeah, you're yeah. already on the back foot in terms of how you're supposed to be feeling, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I probably wouldn't watch that again. But, like, I think, I think the most disturbing horror movie that I've seen like, in terms of violence, would probably be Cannibal Holocaust. Mm. No, you've seen that. It, yeah, seen that it features one. real animal violence. And just something about the, the 70s filter and the gritty, like, cam look mm. and the, mm. the soundtrack, just, like, it just does. It didn't make me feel very good. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think I need to watch this movie <laughs> ever yeah. again. So, yeah. So I, 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 I do, read the premise I of limits. it and I was like, nah, I'm not going to watch this. Like, that's the thing, like... <laughs> I acknowledge that the sadness is, is you know, it's a pretty well-crafted film, but mm. it's not making me leap to watch any of these other films. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fair enough. I mean, like, uh, you can't watch them all the time, right? If you are someone that watches them all the time, I want to ask, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you, if you look at my recent letterbox, then you might want to be asking. <laughs> it's... Some, for some people, it's their bag. And, like, I wouldn't take yeah. anybody's enjoyment of this kind of film away from them. I think, you know, to deny the existence of films that go beyond my level of what I'm comfortable with watching would be pretty unreasonable of me. Like, mm. because who is fit to draw that line, you know? Like, you might as well yeah. get rid of all the Tarantino films out there. <laughs> yeah, Because yeah. people, a lot of people hate them for being so too violent or too gratuitous, but, like, mm-hmm. they, they're great. Yeah, yeah. they're great. Yeah, exactly. Oh, there are, oh, dude, I'm just, I haven't seen these particular movies. I think, like, I just read the premise of the, these movies and I don't want to see them, but, like, there's a, a Serbian film, if you guys oh, yeah. that. Oh, yeah, that's like the classic. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's like the classic. Yeah. disturbing movie. There's basically, there's basically, like, the skull fuck scene, but it's shown, and, like, it's really dramatic. But I haven't seen that. But apparently that bit is kind of funny, because uh, it happens to a villain, not an innocent person, much <laughs> like the sadness. But 
Uh, one of my friends, uh, she was telling me about this Japanese movie that she watched. Uh, it's called Squirm Fest. Mm. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> I don't think I could even say what is in that film on this. It's, I think that shit is just too much. It's too heavy. <laughs> like, uh, basically what I said before, the stuff that disturbs me about bodily fluids, like, it's like out in full force in this movie. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's fucked. Like if you, uh, if you read about it, it's fucked. <laughs> like, I'm like, nah, man, mm. that's, uh, I'm good. Like I want to actually be able to eat after, like I had to eat the next day. You know, <laughs> like it's, it's fucked. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Takashi Mika as well, Tavi. I mean, like that guy's done shitloads of movies that make you feel kind of, not great. <laughs> yeah, While yeah. Enduring. I mean, audi- yeah, audition. Audition is one of the like the one. classic kind of like the same mm. movies. Isn't yeah, it? I I've got like the fucking special edition Blu-ray of that. No, I <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I watched a lot of. Well, it was for it was for like a, a project that I was doing. Okay. Mm. Um, so I was watching like a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Does the project like... involve a Hessian sack and some <laughs> <laughs> long needles? <laughs> But this style of movie and, like, it's weird because it's becoming more accepted and less accepted at the same time because we've had stuff like Squid Game come out, which is pretty Mm. violent and, like, uh, in a sense depraved, right, for, like, a Netflix headliner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd agree with that. Yeah, like, Squid Game is pretty fucked up, like, in terms of its violence level and, like, the themes and stuff like that. But, you Mm. know... People fucking loved it. It's funny how we don't even think of Squid Game as a violent show, really. Well, yeah. Actually, no, there was... That's kind of, for us, per se, like, yeah, there was some Squid Game was a bit controversial. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was some controversy because, like, kids were watching it because, you know, once something's popular, like, everyone wants to watch it. Like, for legal reasons, your kids shouldn't watch it. <laughs> but for, like, you know, if you're a kid, you should sneak out and <laughs> watch, watch Squid Game. Yeah, yeah. Game. The only reason why I was reminded about that was because we were talking about Takashi Miike, and mm. I remember this movie, what's it called? Uh, As the Gods Will. Oh, uh, yeah, that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is kind of that. a pretty similar kind of premise to Squid Game, and it's also mm. pretty unsettling and, yeah... Pretty, like, fucked up yeah, when you no, think I, about it. I haven't seen that movie yet. I've, it's been on my radar. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, maybe I'll, watch it, maybe it. I'll watch it after it's the podcast. It's, 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 it's quite <laughs> depraved, Tavi, so, you know, <laughs> you like it. Is it like, is it like Alice in Borderland? Yeah, very vibe? similar kind of, you know, um, game, game vibe. Hmm. Fucked up games, um, thriller, element, Takashi Miike. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. you, you'll get it. I don't think it. Yeah, it's not like it's not. Like, it's not groundbreaking or anything. But you know, if if you want that disturbing fix in a Japanese Takashi Miike package, I recommend yeah. it. I think as we were saying before, like I think you don't need to go to the extremities of watching maybe something like the sadness, <laughs> but I think you do need to get in touch with what it is to be disturbed. Do you advise people to build up to it, Tavi, or do you just advise them to dive straight into the deep No, he's not a dive, he's a dive. <laughs> Even though I'm, I'm basically, I'm basically retracting everything that I said by saying that. But like, you know, when, when I was a kid and I, I just dove in, I actually, I probably built up to it. So I watch <laughs> Aliens and then Predator. I think if, if they're good productions, then it doesn't really matter. Like, mm. Because, like, I can understand why people would like the sadness, like this film, but I wouldn't extend that same understanding to something like uh, Human Centipede, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. the level of production is not, you know, it's not quite there. And I, I know, I'm sure a lot of people do enjoy the Human Centipede, but I I wouldn't be able to understand that, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, I think the premise is a bit too silly for me for that one. <laughs> and it yeah. just seems like a, a shit movie, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's not a great film. <laughs> but I guess that might be the fun of it. I don't know. I haven't yeah. seen it. But, um, like, the sadness is genuinely, it's it's a pretty good production. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, a lot of care went into it, obviously, and, yeah. I found what you said about, you know, how everybody needs to experience this kind of film at least once so they, like, know what it's like. Like it's it's mm. an it, it's an interesting kind of like way to look at things, right? Because 
I guess a lot of people go through like life and stuff kind of just sitting in the middle of things and never experiencing yeah. the streams at either end. Right. And, so, um, whether it comes to movies or like, I don't know, like, you know how people run marathons and you think it's the fucking stupidest yeah, thing yeah. ever. And they're like, Oh man, you gotta <laughs> do it. Like you gotta feel the yeah. rush. You gotta feel the pain. And you're like, uh, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, uh, yeah. nah, man, I'm good. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of the same thing, right? Like when yeah, you say yeah. like, you gotta watch this fucking, you gotta watch the sadness. It's really good, man. Like, like, you feel like you're gonna fucking you. rush afterwards. Like it's, it's not going to give everybody a rush. Right. Like some people, they're going to start running this marathon. They're probably going to puke like, <laughs> like a minute into it. Yeah, it's probably the same thing with the sadness. Really, if you're used to watching, <laughs> like you know, if you think like I don't know, <laughs> if you think like um, Incredible Beasts is like scary, <laughs> and then you and then you watch like uh, the sadness, like you're going to be in for a bit of a shock. <laughs> I do. I do have a habit of. Um... Uh, like suggesting really extreme movies <laughs> to people and then not telling them the content. Uh, I, had, I had a friend a while ago, uh, this is years as work in high school, uh, they could not stand horror movies at all. Uh, I made them watch Shaun of the Dead <laughs> and they were like pretty like shocked by mm. Shaun of the Dead. It's like, wow, like, because like, part of me thought, like, oh, yeah, you know, Shaun mm. of the Dead's a good gateway to horror because it's funny. Yeah. But, like, they were traumatized mm, by yeah. it. Um, and it's, like, kind of like, you know, when you have, like, an Aussie friend and yeah. they've never eaten hey, any spicy food or any ate. Down. No, you know what I mean. They're, like, you have a white friend. <laughs> a day dead. Are you never eaten assuming? any Asian food. And then, like... You know, you, you want them to try something because it's really good, like yeah, like yeah, laugh or something. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Like, it's yeah, the same kind of deal. Yeah, like, yeah. Like we we all like we know somebody like that. <laughs> but it is, yeah, yeah. Like it is gratifying when they actually do try it, and then they they get a taste for it. Yeah, like yeah, it, so yeah. Like, it's just like you know. fun. yeah, exactly. I think it's just so, like, so just what you're saying it, is like if you yeah. show them a taste of, taste of violence, then that <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't well. I wouldn't force <laughs> yeah. feed them the <laughs> super hot spicy lap for two hours though. Yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. shit tastes yeah. pretty good with sticky rice. Mm. <laughs> 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 wonder how it would taste with a uh, blood orgy as well. <laughs> imagine like watching the sadness for the first time and eating larp at the same time <laughs> you would like uh, you would not want to eat larp ever again <laughs> we're crossing over <laughs> into a very uh, strange <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. but yeah I, I, I would probably watch the sadness again like as you said like I'd probably show it to friends who who could stomach it like I probably I wouldn't just shove the sad to sons of people. Mm. Um, <laughs> I hope, but <laughs> yeah, I I would like to watch other horror movies that are kind of done. I suppose not in the same way, but to the same level. Like we've seen yeah. it in like a zombie format, but like what if we see it mm. in like I don't know, like a you know a supernatural format or like a um what are the fucking horror tropes out there like a vampire format <laughs> yeah i don't so, want to see oh, the yeah. sadness Dude, of vampires have, have you have you have you not heard of morbius <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, yeah. the, the movie that's made one trillion dollars in the box office i, I, I better go check it out got, I, I have heard of it i have heard of it like, yeah it's, it's got it's got it's got 218 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> oh cool i can't believe i haven't heard of it man yeah, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean uh, I mean for this kind of concept I feel like there is a lot of potential for a lot of bad movies mm. to be made as well that that kind of exploit this premise. That's like horror. I'm glad that, this, that's horror though, this right? film was good. Horror is like the most yeah. regularly butchered genre in cinema, right? Like it's yeah. and it's and like Tavi, would you agree that it's the hardest kind of genre to like do well? Um, I would say yeah, definitely. It doesn't get the critical praise that it should. It's, it's definitely really fun to write, but it's hard to make it good. Like to have it acclaimed, like you have you have to remember to put the horror in your horror. I guess <laughs> like you know, um, it's yeah, no, it's, it's not an easy it's not an easy genre to do. Yeah, I mean, like it's um, known for its yeah. tropes, right? And like it's. It's hard to shake them. It's hard to it's hard to please like 
horror aficionados along with like general audience mm. and critics. Like, I think I just heard this term the other day, but they call it like elevated horror. And that's basically all like the A24 horror, like hereditary and midsummer. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah. it's they're not particularly supernatural or like jump scary in that manner as in a traditional horror, but they're quite disturbing, but they're more like art house style films. Yeah. Um, yep, yep. And horror, horror, horror fans don't necessarily like those films per se, because they're like, uh, because not, not a lot happens. Mm. Um, what about a movie what, like, like, critics, like get out yeah. or something like that? Like yeah. the same genre, right? Same category. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's not like a slasher, I no. guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. I think it's the same for any kind of genre. Like you have like kind of extremes where it is hard to to get critical acclaim. Like even with action films, like if you like have a straight martial arts film, it's going to be pretty hard to to get critical acclaim. But if you have something mm. like Everything Everywhere All at Once, you know that's. It's going to appeal to a lot more people and, uh, you know, a lot more critics, especially. I think, like, if you have that simple story, uh, I think you just have to tell it really well. Um, And that's, like, basically what the sadness does. Like, it has a very basic story, very basic plot. But, like, I mean, obviously, on basing on your taste, whether it's told well or not, is, you know, (laughs) uh, going to be a different opinion. But because it's told in such an extreme way that people haven't seen before. Um, and like you said, like as a technical film itself, it's quite well shot. Mm. Uh, it's quite tense and the acting is good. So like people have gravitated towards that. Yeah. Um, I feel like so, yeah, yeah. as a diehard, like you're always going to appreciate the classic elements and tropes done really well. Um, mm. I think that's why, you know, if, you got, if we're going to talk about action, it's movies like The Raid and um, mm. the John Wick films that people really, mm. like, kind of really like, um, even mm. though they do bring really kind of basic storylines, um, yeah, to the table. Like, it doesn't really matter, right? Like, yeah, it's probably the same. Yeah, into the genre, right? Yeah, it's the same thing with horror. Like, I think it's when when you really nail kind of the classic elements uh, and do them really well, and maybe like add an element of like extremity or something that people haven't seen before. That's when you kind of get something that people really are really going to like. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that's pretty much all I have to say about the sadness. Really, <laughs> um, any any final thoughts? Yeah, I think I think we're good. All right, guys. Um, how did you feel about the sadness? Do you think it was a bridge too far, or would you like to see more of this kind of film being made? Let us know. You can get in touch with us at two Asian Blokes at gmail dot com, or you can join our Facebook group to be part of the conversation, or you can follow us on Instagram at two Asian Blokes to see what we're up to. Thank you to Boone for joining us for this episode. No worries. Love, love being on here. Yeah. Until next time, I, <laughs> I'll bring another. I'll bring another whack movie. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. Maybe we can we'll watch a uh, Serbian film or something. Or <laughs> yeah, I bring. I bring a Serbian film. Yeah, well, maybe. Uh, movie oh, Tavi, Tavi, I was actually thinking about uh, rewatching uh, Crazy Rich Asians. Were you keen on that? <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should actually watch Morbius. <laughs> <laughs> should we Morbius actually watch time. Morbius? <laughs> oh man, we should have a watch party for Morbius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. I became a Morbius watch party. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank oh, you God. for if if you've somehow made it through to the end of this episode. Thank <laughs> you for, for listening to us. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hope I hope you can still sleep. <laughs> uh, but yeah, genuinely, like if you enjoy this type of film, you know, fair play. Um, yeah, like everybody has their own individual tastes. So, yes, yeah. Harvey. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're all wrong. <laughs> all right, guys, I think that's it from us. Uh, until next time, take care. Peace, Bye-bye. peace, peace, peace. Right, see you guys. <laughs>